Your forecast first, sponsored by Natax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. We continue to track the showers and storms moving through central Illinois right now. First off, though, you can see that we have had a number of the storms come through the viewing area, kind of weakened now as they've approached I-70. There are still a couple of strong ones out there, which we'll highlight here in just a moment. Temperatures have fallen behind the storms, mainly into the upper 60s and low 70s. Our view from Charleston on our first speed weather camera on our roofing dog and it does show that uh, the rain showers that were heavy ones have come to an end, and the wind gusts are also starting to come down as well. So we'll have all the latest on our storms, as well as a couple of pictures from damage as well. We're still expecting, though, the chance for storm to linger on later on into the evening. WCIA 3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA 3 News. I want to play, they want to play. But is that going to happen? The latest on if there's going to be a football season. This community has, has not experienced the full um, effect of having U of I students here. They're starting to return to campus. What's being done to try and keep them safe? And it's a time when crime seems to be getting more and more violent. But that could be stopping people from becoming police officers. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 6. Severe weather once again causing havoc in central Illinois. This is on Centennial Drive in Champaign. A tree snapped and fell onto this house. Good evening, I'm Jennifer Roscoe. Now this storm has brought high winds, heavy rain, and a lot of damage. We have team coverage for you tonight. Our meteorologist Jeff Gerfin, live from the Tracking Center, and our chief meteorologist Kevin Lighty is live in Storm Tracker. And first, we go to Jack. Thanks, Jennifer. Yeah, we'll start off with our storm tracker right now. As you can see, actually quite a bit of a better picture now with our warnings. We have Clark County for the next uh, about 14 minutes or so with their severe thunderstorm warning for strong winds up to 60 miles per hour. And then we have the far southern portion of Macoupin County for their severe thunderstorm warning for 60 mile per hour winds. And that's it. The good news is that these storms have weakened. Now, unfortunately, they did pack a wallop as they were coming through the area. Again, just another quick view now. You can kind of see that most of these storms now have kind of uh, fizzled out. The intensity isn't there. They're not as connected like the line that they were earlier on. Now, as you zoom way out, you're going to see that this is a duration. This is a bow echo of storms that has ca crossed through not only all of Illinois into Michigan and Indiana right now, but it went through all of Iowa. And we also had it start off its life cycle in South Dakota as well as Nebraska. So it has traveled hundreds of miles and it had wind gusts over 90 miles per hour, even over 100 miles per hour across parts of Illinois as well as, uh, as, well as Iowa. Now for us, we haven't had as much as the very, very strong winds, but we've obviously has seen a number of spots there with tremendous wind gusts over 70 miles per hour creating damage. And that's why we have the damage that we do have. We're going to go to Chief Meteorologist Kevin Lighty right now with the latest on that. Yeah, I am in Urbana, and you can see behind me, take a look at this tree snapped. You can see workers here are trying to clear this. This is across Fairlawn Drive here in southeast Urbana. This is a huge tree, and you can see them back there working on it. But here's the thing. Follow along with me. We're going to come around, and this damage from this tree is not just there, but it keeps going all away back here to additional trees and guess what it continues all the way back around here as well with trees literally all 360 degrees around literally i have walked around in a circle with you here to show you just how much damage is here and it is pretty widespread across the region so Here's the thing. I just talked to a couple over here. They had a tree that uh, the branch came right hitting on the side of their house there. We're going to hear from them a little bit later. But a lot of damage here in Urbana as these storms were packing a punch with those 60 to 70 mile per hour winds. Thanks, Kevin. And now we're going to go to Jennifer. All right. Well, in Urbana, so many trees. Oh, that's terrible. All right. Thank you. The Mid-American Conference canceled football season for this fall. Now all eyes are on the Power Five conferences to see if they will be the next to pull the plug. WCI 3 is Marley Weirdo with us. I feel as though I, I think everybody's been checking Twitter every five right. seconds to just get the official word on this. Yeah, and there's no official decision yet, and it's really been a chaotic couple of days with several reports saying that football 
school season is unlikely this year. But again, nothing official. The Illini have made it clear, though, that they do want to play. Dozens of athletes have spoken out on social media, but ultimately, it's the presidents of the universities that are the ones driving these decisions. Today, an ESPN report said there, there's a rare heart condition linked to COVID-19, which could point to why the Power Five commissioners are concerned. Illinois head coach Lovey Smith says coaches in the league aren't involved with deciding what's going to happen with college football, but they're still hoping for an opportunity. If I want to play, they want to play. They tell us we can't play right now. When's the next time we can play? Uh, if that's the spring, so be it. Eventually, we're going to have football, so we're going to embrace that time whenever it comes. Right now, no one has told us we're not playing right now, so we're we're looking forward to that at opening game. I get things changed, and they say it's the spring. We look forward to the spring. Now, some Big Ten coaches have even considered leaving the conference so that they could play, but the bottom line with these decisions is safety. As of July 30th, Illini Athletics reported a positivity rate of 1.9% for COVID-19, and that's just the reality of this situation, but the Illini say they feel pretty safe getting on the field during a pandemic. We'll hear from some of the players coming up later in sports as we hang tight and wait for a decision to come from the Big Ten. All right, Marley, thank you. 13 police officers in Chicago were hurt overnight after hundreds of looters smashed into downtown storefronts, some clashing with police. The organized looting started after police returned fire and shot a man on the city's south side. The suspect is recovering in the hospital, but dozens of businesses sustained major damage. Our Capitol Bureau Chief Mark Maxwell has more on the political fallout for some of Chicago's top officials. Mark, the mayor and police chief said the looters acted without any fear of consequences. Yeah, Jennifer, it was quite a scene, but police believe it all started with a misunderstanding. Rumors spread quickly that uh, uh, police had shot an unarmed teenager. It turns out authorities said that wasn't true. They said, in fact, it was a 20-year-old man who had a gun and fired first at police before they returned fire. Uh, but now the lawless looting is only feeding a sense of fear and helpless frustration. This was an act of violence against our police officers and against our city. Chicago Police Superintendent David Brown spoke for many Chicago police officers, increasingly frustrated to see criminals they've arrested later walk free. Criminals took to the streets with confidence that there would be no consequences for their actions. Brown's remarks, a direct rebuke of Cook County State's Attorney Kim Fox. 2020 is unlike any year we have seen. Fox said the pandemic and push for social justice combined to contribute to an unprecedented summer of violence. But when she announced her office would not prosecute what she called minor offenses in the protests and looting over the death of George Floyd, her critics pounced, arguing she gave looters an inch and they took the magnificent mile. And I call upon our state's attorney and our courts to make sure that these individuals who are arrested and those to come are held accountable. Mayor Lori Lightfoot, a former federal prosecutor, appeared to blame Fox for not cracking down. Our police officers put themselves at great risk last night. Literally, they were being fired upon as they were working to stop the looters. Fox responding. That if they are caught, they will be prosecuted. And if not, State Senator Steve McClure worries the demoralizing message it could send police. And the state's attorney does not have your back. What, why would you ever want to be a police officer? McClure, a former state prosecutor, said Mayor Lightfoot shares in the blame. We didn't just wake up this morning and, oh my goodness, Chicago has been perfect up until now. Kim Fox has been a public defender. That's all that she has done. And her concern has been about the perpetrators of violent crime, the perpetrators of retail thefts. It's never been about the victims. And the fact that the Chicago mayor wakes up this morning and finally comes to that realization, that's wonderful, but it's a bit too late based on the destruction. House Democrat LaShawn Ford supports long-term fixes to repair inequities in the criminal justice system, but says there's no excuse for this kind of organized mayhem. We do have to be tough on crime when it comes to people that deliberately continue to want to have it their way. If you want to have it your way and you want to be a criminal, then we have to be in position to lock them up. Tonight, Governor Pritzker and Chicago's Mayor Lori Lightfoot say no to Republican calls to bring in the National Guard. Also, business groups are help, uh, saying they just need help picking up the pieces from their storefronts. The last thing they want is new fines if they violate Governor Pritzker's COVID-19 orders. A vote on that controversial measure scheduled for tomorrow in Springfield. Jennifer.
All right, Mark, thank you so much for that report. For more than three decades, Kendall Gill has hit the T for Cunningham Children's Home. But COVID-19 wasn't the only major change this year, and also tonight. Students are moving back to campus. What's being done to keep them safe? We'll have a wrap-up of the storms that we've seen come through central Illinois already. Well, they'll take a look at our headlines right now. We have more rain in our forecast after the storms are done tonight, and it'll be staying warm and humid for the week ahead. That's all coming up next.